I'll take this and that. Or oh, need one of those. And I gotta take that. Yes, yes, no. Across its complex and wide-reaching history, the game industry has often gone through phases where certain trends or business practices can define particular eras. Whether it be the advent and explosion of 3D games in the mid to late 90s, gritty and edgier titles dominating public consciousness throughout the 2000s, or the shift towards making games more serious and treating them as an art form in the 2010s, it feels as though almost any time span in gaming history dating back the past 40 plus years can be earmarked by specific tendencies. Some can be great, like when handheld gaming materialized and caught fire in the early 90s, while others, such as the widespread adoption of loot boxes and microtransactions in the late 2010s, can ultimately damage gaming to a great degree, whether it be in public perception or the actual creation of the art form. And unfortunately, right now, it feels like we're on the precipice of another worrying trend staking its claim. Acquisitions. If you've kept up with any sort of video game news since around the middle of 2020, you'll know that acquisitions of smaller game studios by bigger companies has not only become a consistent headline with it happening on and off every several months, but also a major talking point among gamers themselves. Who should buy who? Does this company have enough money to pull off a sale? Should this company be bought out to change its direction? The list goes on. From big companies like Capcom and Square Enix to smaller studios like Falcom and Level 5, acquisitions have and likely will be the talk of the town for years to come in gaming, especially if more large-scale purchases continue to be made similar to a few recent examples. And while it's no doubt newsworthy and creates buzz whenever it happens, it's time to stop! While I'm far from the only person to echo this sentiment, I want to make a video to stress just how god-awful constant acquisitions will be for gaming, and how the consequences of this becoming normalized will only lead to less creativity, fewer games, and far more stagnation in the industry than any of the obnoxious console fanboys screaming for constant buyouts seem to realize. The main point of interest surrounding these buyouts floats specifically around the console makers, and any of the purchases they make, or any of the hypothetical ones gamers talk about. There are other large conglomerates that are in the buyout game like Tencent, but let's be honest, all any of the buyouts from then resulted in is a collective FUCK! So the big three is the center of attention here. Most are aware by now that this whole shebang started off back in the middle of 2020, when all of us were stuck inside, no idea what the fuck was going on, world basically on fire, we all woke up one morning and saw, oh, Xbox owns Bethesda now. You know it's a fuck up year when that doesn't even make the top 20 wildest moments. But yeah, while company buyouts have been far from unheard of up till that point, what with the likes of Sony buying Insomniac in 2019, Nintendo buying Monolith in 2007, and Microsoft buying Rare all the way back in 2002, it was the latter's absorption of Bethesda that was really the gunshot that kicked off this current mass obsession with the topic we see today. Partially because of just how huge huge of a move it was. In one fell swoop, Xbox gained total control over massive franchises like The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Wolfenstein, and Doom. And once that little piece of info clicked with everybody, oh, did that get gamers thinking the worst possible ideas. With how obsessive the industry has always been about exclusives, the idea that franchises that huge could just suddenly become stationed to one system only made console fanboys fraud at the mouth. Why pay for exclusivity on one or two titles when you can just buy the whole damn farm? This, however, would only be the start to the insanity, as two years later, Microsoft would announce another acquisition that would make all others pale in comparison. Buying full control over a toxic waste of, I mean Activision Blizzard, for a whopping total of... Nice. This purchase in particular has been the one to truly shake the industry to its very core, with it resulting in Xbox gaining full ownership over Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Starcraft, Warcraft, Diablo, Candy Crush, and of course, 
COD. And while there's no doubt some of these will stay multi-plat, quite frankly, Call of Duty being exclusive would only limit the amount of money it could make. CHRIST! But in the span of just a few years, Xbox went from having no games to, well, having one game, but what it could mean for their future is mind-boggling. Although, I swear to God, if you fuckers just leave Crash and Spyro to die like you did Banjo all those years ago, I just... God. No doubt, these two mergers alone will leave lasting effects on the industry. And that's not even getting into all the small pickups from Microsoft over the past several years, like Double Fine, Ninja Theory, and Undead Labs. Many companies have been taking notice of this. In particular, Sony has bore witness to all of these changes, and their general reaction could be summed up as... No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, wait, wait! Having a competitor make such massive moves will obviously put the other organization in the hot seat. And while Sony doesn't exactly have the same amount of coin to just fling around like Microsoft, seriously, they might as well have a real-world infinite money glitch, PlayStation has responded with several buyouts of their own. No bank-breaking sprees like Bethesda or Activision, but Sony has made an active effort to bolster their studio lineup. This can mainly be seen through the purchases of the likes of Housemark, Firewalk, Bluepoint, and most noteworthy of all, Bungie. Yes, PlayStation now owns the original creators of Halo, and Xbox now owns two of the most defining mascots of the PS1. What the actual shit is this timeline? Sony hasn't gotten as many heavy hitter IPs in its acquisitions outside of Destiny with Bungie, but the talent pool they have has now been boosted greatly to try and counteract Microsoft's big moves. And it's probably safe to say both of these companies aren't finished yet and will just continue running around in this money dick measuring contest to see who can buy what. By now, however, some of you may be wondering why a certain other company hasn't been mentioned till this point. Nintendo's mainly been absent from this video primarily because, well, they've mostly been absent from this situation altogether. Whereas the other two seem to be in an all-out war trying to make major strategic purchases, the big ends kinda just been hanging back not giving a fuck. Now, in truth, this is pretty on point for Nintendo. Throughout their history, they very rarely do full buyouts of studios. In fact, many of the major companies people heavily associate with Nintendo, they don't flat out own. Game Freak, Intelligent Systems, HAL Labs, Camelot, Grezzo, none of them are under Nintendo's full ownership. The only ones they have total control over are Retro, Monolith, and Next Level Games, the last of which being a very recent purchase at that. They're pretty much the only acquisition that could be seen as part of this big boom. And even then, that has less to do with the big competitive acquisition trend and more to do with Luigi's Mansion 3 absolutely bawling the f**k out. So it's pretty unlikely Nintendo will get involved in the doldrums of this unless major companies that matter to them start getting looped in. It is notable that the overwhelming majority of acquisitions so far have been Western companies. So that about sums up each company's buyout situations up to this point. Things have gone mostly quiet ever since Microsoft bought Activision and Sony bought Bungie, due to how much both had to drop in each of those cases. However, that certainly hasn't stopped fan speculation. Many super fans of each console have continued to discuss who could be purchased next. Almost every month you hear Sony should buy Square Enix, Microsoft should buy Capcom, anybody please buy Konami. And I I feel in the wake of all that, it's important to state that we should stop encouraging that and SHUT UP! Yeah! In all seriousness though, all of these acquisitions people keep suggesting are straight up terrible ideas and will only make the hobby we all love worse as a result. First of all, if one of these major studios people talk about gets swallowed up, expect the amount of games they make to drastic go down. down. Part of the reason why these companies can make a wider variety of games is because certain platforms carry different audiences and thus allow for success in many different areas by hitting on pinpoint groups. 
Square Enix, for example. Games like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Nier Automata would sell better on PlayStation thanks to the interests of PlayStation's fan base. But smaller, quirkier titles from them, such as, say, an HD 2D game or a sequel to The World Ends With You, doesn't largely appeal to that group. But those do hit with the Nintendo audience. Thus, Square can still make those types of games with success thanks to that fan outlet. But if you restrict the whole company's release market by having them owned by one console maker, they'd have to severely whittle down the types of games they make to placate to that smaller circle. If PlayStation got Square Enix, you could kiss any chance of success for most of their franchises outside of Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts goodbye. <laughs> Or another example, if Nintendo got someone like Capcom, they wouldn't have as much of a base for something like Resident Evil to thrive. And that's before getting into the regional differences that would affect the successes of particular series. If a major Western company like Microsoft got a hold of someone like Sega, prepare to them to just become Yakuza, maybe Sonic, and basically nothing else. And that's just the big guys. It could be even more damaging to smaller studios because they wouldn't get to stretch their legs and experiment as much as they could under their own power. If the little guys don't put up the numbers required under a big umbrella, they could just end up being liquidated into to other parts of the bigger organization and lose their identity, or as we in the business call it, EA's graveyard. These constant buyout calls also just delve into the underlying problem of, you know, Monopolies are bad. Putting so much stock into one company's hands will only lead to an excess amount of control under one group, which is, again, I thought we all agreed, a bad thing. The fact is, all these buyouts only create limits on what these companies can do, especially if they're one that already has a wide reach, so you'd effectively just be handcuffing them to one console. Too much power in one company's hands is never going to be good, which is exactly why Xbox buying Nintendo, like Phil Spencer reportedly wants, should never happen. Seriously, good fucking luck with that, Phil. Plus, let's just call a spade a spade, folks. Most of these calls for acquisitions are just the result of fanboys wanting their plastic box to have more worth and merit than the other plastic box. They don't care about the industry, they don't care about getting a strong variety of games, they just want to be able to say, ha ha, I can play blank and you can't. It's all just dumb fanatic behavior that needed to die on the school playground a long time ago. Now, I will fully admit, there are a couple cases where buyouts can be alright, and even a good thing, but it needs to be under particular circumstances. Mainly when it's a smaller studio that either has very close pre-existing ties to the buyer, or it's a group that's on the verge of going out of business and an acquisition is effectively what saves them from bankruptcy. For the former, take Sony buying Insomniac. That was a big purchase, but it was also one no one batted an eye at because Insomniac already had such deep-seated ties to PlayStation. It just felt like an appropriate move. And in the case of saving a company from going under, look at Nintendo buying Monolith Soft. Monolith was on the verge of dying out in the mid to late 2000s due to their relationship with Namco souring over the treatment of Xenosaga. So Nintendo acquired near full ownership over them in 2007, and over 15 years later, monoliths reached all new heights many thought could never be attained for them. Though sadly, not every studio can be saved from such a fate. <laughs> So there are a few cases where purchasing studios can be good, but the specifics have to be in favor of the studios themselves instead of just acting as a boost to the larger company and stoking the ego of fanboys. It's hard to say where this acquisition trend will go in the future, as it all depends on how the larger organizations choose to spend their money. Hopefully, with the larger purchases of Bungie and especially Activision, Sony and Microsoft slow down in just 
just absorbing everything around them. Plus, it's not like these companies need to buy out all these studios. They have more than enough talent and valuable IPs on hand at this point to satisfy their customers and make the consoles worthwhile. Buckling down and producing a variety of high-quality games is going to mean a hell of a lot more to fans than just getting a bunch of Twitter buzz by saying, we own this now. So really, in the end, my whole point just comes back to the common sentiment of stop your business bullshit and just make good games. We'll see if this trend cools off or fully dies down in coming years, but hopefully we won't end up at a point where one company owns too much and throttles all creativity. Although, again, if a studio is going under, please save them, especially if they're talented. I can't go through this again. I have a question for God.